Welcome to case study number 10. We're going to talk about a patient with fatigue and weight gain. If you haven't had the opportunity yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the I button in the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. So thank you very much in advance for your consideration. Now let's get to our patient. We have a 48-year-old Japanese-American woman presenting to the office complaining of weight gain and fatigue over the last six months. She says that she's gained 35 pounds over these past six months despite closely monitoring her diet using a mobile app. She denies change in appetite. She also describes some fatigue, making it difficult to concentrate at work. She says she's sleeping 8 to 10 hours at night and naps frequently on the weekend. She has no significant past medical history. She works as a biomedical engineer for a large firm. She drinks rarely, denies tobacco and recreational drug use. She's sexually monogamous with her husband. She's had three normal vaginal deliveries. Periods are irregular at 5 to 6 weeks. Last period was three weeks ago, and she calls it heavy. No medications, vitals within normal limits. Her BMI is currently 28.6, up from 22.5 at her routine visit nine months ago. So she's got a 37-pound weight gain, and she doesn't know why, because she is monitoring her diet, and she doesn't really have much of an increase in appetite. How frustrating. Okay, so what do we want to do in this patient? She's in the office, so we can do a pretty comprehensive physical. So, no apparent distress. She's overweight. Her skin is dry and coarse. No rashes or pallor. No lymphadenopathy. Uh, so, uh, head eyes, ears, nose, throat. She's got a loss of the lateral third of her eyebrows and normal mucous membranes. Her neck is supple, the thyroid is not enlarged or painful, chest and lung cleared auscultation, cardiovascular regular rate and rhythm, no murmurs, abdomen soft, non-tender, non-distended, normal bowel sounds. Neurologically, she's got delayed deep tendon reflexes and mild weakness to resistant throughout. And psychiatrically, her mental status is normal. So what are we going to do? Well, first of all, we got to put together a differential. And clearly, the number one in your differential is going to be hypo. hypo thyroidism. Why? Well, she's got the dry skin, she's got the weight gain despite a normal appetite or even a reduced appetite. Uh, I mean, just go back and look at this. You know, she's sleeping a ton and she's still tired. She's got heavy periods. We want to maybe go back and find out, you know, are your periods usually heavy? Thyroid problems can interfere with your uh, with your menstruation and and, uh, and cause problems there. Uh, so you know she's got a lot of findings of hypothyroidism. She's got the dry and coarse skin. She's got hair loss. Uh, she's got delayed deep tendon reflexes. There's a million and one manifestations of hypothyroidism. But if you start to have a constellation like this, we really, really, really need to consider it, and it's very easy to test for. What else? Well, anemia. Maybe it's anemia. I mean, she's got heavy periods. That's an easy way to lose blood. Um, it wouldn't explain a lot of the things, but it's something we would need to check for. And maybe she's got hypothyroidism and anemia. So we got to check for that. Major depressive disorder. She's got depressive symptoms. So we got to consider that. Obstructive sleep apnea. She's overweight and she is uh, sleeping throughout the day despite getting adequate amount of sleep at night. Something we need to consider. Uh, and then the possibility of substance withdrawal. You need to know all of the substances, what they do when you're intoxicated, and also what they do when you're withdrawing. Do I think this is a patient who is coming down off of cocaine and meth? Mm -mm. But again, probably something that you would want to consider because you never know. So uh, we're going to get a CBC BMP. We're going to get a TSH and a free T4. That's going to be useful. We're going to get a lipid profile because we suspect hypothyroidism and then we'll get a depression index. A urine tox screen wouldn't really be helpful here because the only possible drug use that we're considering, we're considering withdrawal and so you may not have a positive screen there. It's also very, very unlikely in this patient. 
So our labs are within normal limits, but our TSH is elevated and our free T4 is low. We know at this point that she's got hypothyroidism, specifically primary hypothyroidism. The lipid profile shows hypercholesterolemia and hyperlipidemia, and her depression index is consistent with moderate depression. That is a manifestation of hypothyroidism. Remember that we cannot make a psychiatric diagnosis if there is coinciding explicable medical conditions that we can realistically tie to that psychiatric illness, okay? So if she's treated and her thyroid goes back to normal or TSH and free T4 normalize and she continues to have depressive symptoms, then we may be able to put the MDD label on this, but not now. And uh, your, your uh, CS is going to, CCS is going to really hammer that. So our management, uh, this is a diagnosis of central hypothyroidism, which is a high TSH and a low T4. That's typically how hypothyroidism shows up. But if you had a secondary hypothyroidism, that's a problem with either the pituitary or the hypothalamus. In that case, you'd have a low TSH and a low T4. Further diagnostic testing, you don't need to do it because it doesn't really make much of a difference. We're going to treat it the same. This is probably Hashimoto's thyroiditis. It's the number one cause in the U.S. You would get anti-TPO titers to really nail down that diagnosis. The immediate treatment is going to be thyroid hormone replacement. That's done with levothyroxine. We're going to advise lifestyle changes because she's overweight. We want to advise a low-fat and high-fiber diet. We want to uh, advise an exercise program. We want to ensure that she's complying with her medications. So that's important. And then reassure her. And then we're going to follow up in six weeks uh, with a TSH. And hopefully that will have normalized. Now, anytime you change the dosage of levothyroxine, you want to recheck the patient in six weeks. This is something that I made for you. Uh, so we were right here, but uh, you can print this out and use this if you want. Some of the common differentials include secondary hypothyroidism, same symptoms, but they may have visual field deficits, which would be a pituitary adenoma, or they may have other endocrine manifestations uh, of uh, low pituitary hormone levels. That would be something that we would see in apoplexy, otherwise known as Sheehan syndrome. That's going to be a patient who just gave birth, lost a lot of blood, and now they're not getting their periods and they're craving salt and they're hypothyroid because they're missing a ton of hormones. Major depressive disorder, she fits the criteria, but um, like I said, it can't be attributed to a medical condition or substance abuse slash withdrawal. Anemia, you would expect to see pallor of the skin and mucous membrane. She didn't have that. It would give fatigue. Appetite is usually normal. Obstructive sleep apnea, she's got the persistent daytime sleepiness despite adequate sleeping, and she's overweight. But again, we have a better explanation here. Again, if, if this continued when she gets her thyroid normalized, then yeah, we would probably want to do a sleep study. Alzheimer's dementia, she's definitely not in the age range. Uh, you would expect to see an elderly patient with normal labs. Forgetfulness would be more salient, and uh, you'd do a mini mental status exam, which would be impaired. So uh, to recap, hypothyroidism presents with a ton of different symptoms that I'm sure you can read. Important that goiter may or may not be present. It's not necessary. Hypercholesterolemia and hyperlipidemia are common. That gets forgotten a lot. The most important diagnostic test is going to be those thyroid panels, so TSH and free T4. Anti-TPO antibodies are indicative of Hashimoto's, which remember is the number one cause of hypothyroidism in the United States. The treatment is levothyroxine. You'll titer that until the TSH is in normal range. Remember to follow up in six weeks. Anytime a change in levothyroxine dose is instituted or, of course, when we first institute levothyroxine. Complication of hypothyroidism is myxedema coma. Basically, it's hypothyroid symptoms amped up 
And they also have altered mental status and periorbital uh, or possibly pretibial edema, although this is more associated with thyroid storm. Um, the edema is going to be non-pitting. That's important. 